right, I am all yours. Great. Okay, so uh, I'm thinking that I'll uh, give you a quick uh, demo of uh, some of the basic tools mm -hmm. and then run you through a sample combat. And then I'll go through a few other uh, features on the VT. Um, and then if you have any other questions, we can field those. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me, indeed. Okay, great. Uh, so the first thing uh, is that there's a bunch of toolbar uh, buttons that you'll see kind of on the top left. Uh, and so I'll just go over what those do. So the, the primary one is the pointer tool. Mm -hmm. should be pretty familiar. Um, basically, you can use that for selecting most things beyond just like the basic menu stuff. You can click a token on the map uh, to see its quick stats in the top right. Um, you can also, you might see uh, little scrolls. You can click on those to get info about certain map areas. Uh, so you can either hover over them or click on them. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can also, of course, move your token with, uh, with this and that sort of thing. Uh, so the next one uh, is um, a little hand tool, which you can use to drag the map around. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you have this selected, you can just left click to drag, but also uh, you can use the right click at when you have any of these selected to drag the map. So that's just if you want to use it for, uh, for with your left click. So the next one is a basic line of sight tool. Mm -hmm. So this is just a basic tool for checking line of sight and for seeing how far away something is. So basically you select it, you select a corner of a square, and then you move it around, you can see how many squares away something is, and you can um, manually determine you know, if it goes over a wall or something like that. So just a quick manual tool. Okay. Uh, so the next thing is a pointer tool, that's a little glove. Uh, the gloved hand, and basically when you left click with it, other players can see where you're pointing on the map, mm -hmm, yeah. and then you can click, yep, and you can uh, click the glove, and uh, you'll center on that area. So that's obviously, uh, it's definitely useful if you're the DM, and the players are looking at some other area of the map, and you're like, look over here, and then they click and they center there. So uh, the next tool is uh, that little green rectangle. That's a basic, uh, you can use that for putting area of effects on the map. Okay. And so basically you just drag, um, left click and drag, and you can create rectangles to show various effects. So the basic idea with this is like in D&D you might throw um, like a fiery terrain down, and you might mm -hmm. be like, oh, this area is a fiery terrain. Or it might be like, oh, I'm targeting, you know, this three by three area, right? And then people can see it on the map. And uh, if you want to get rid of those, you can just right click and there'll be a menu bar and you can click delete AOE to get rid of those. Gotcha. Uh, and you'll also notice with some of these that they're in a specific color. Each player has a specific uh, player color that you can, uh, you can change by right clicking on your... Um, on your nameplate, mm -hmm. um, and so that's to distinguish the different players when they use, like they're when they're pointing at something or using the area of effect tool, that sort of thing. Uh, so the other things that, um, hold on, the uh, the other things that you uh, should be seeing is you should see a plus and a minus magnifying glass, yep. and so you can use those to zoom in and out. You can also do that with the mouse scroller. Uh, if you have a middle um, mouse uh, scroller thing. Mm -hmm. yep. Uh, and then the final thing that you should see is uh, there's a, an icon with a name over it, and you can use that just to sh display all the token names, which is um, handy uh, if there's you know similar art, you just want to be clear who, who everyone is. Okay. Uh, so those are the basic toolbars. I have a couple others. Uh, as a DM, one of the things I do is I have a fog of um, war type tool where I can hide different areas of the map. So I just hid that building there, and then I have another uh, tool just to reveal it. So if you ever play around with it on the DM view, you'll see those. And I also have a basic drawing tool that I can do to draw uh, basic shapes. So I can do sh uh, circles and squares. I can make them stick to the grid. I can change their color, that sort of thing. Um, 
and I can also do some free drawing and that kind of thing. So that's useful for uh, filling out a map or just you know making something on the fly, that sort of thing. Cool. So those are the basic uh, the basic toolbars that you'll be using. Um, during like this combat and that sort of thing. So the next thing we should probably do is uh, why don't you pick out a PC that you'd like to play. Uh, so I've got five pre-generated PCs here and if you click on their eye icon you can get a sense of what type they are. The big things you might want to pay attention to are race and class. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you just want to look those over, the eye icon which is on the left hand side next to their name uh, and let me know which one you'd like to use. Okay, so we have Rook the Vampire, Alec Mikal the Wizard, Human, Peter the Human Fighter, Heia Stonefist, the Dwarf, and Bing the Executioner. It's, it's interesting, you have a, an awful lot of very um, diverse races, you, you obviously haven't gone just for the typical um, Human, Halfling, Elf, Eladrin, Dragonborn, uh, gnome half orc. Yeah, uh, basically, I went. I'm, these are um, pre-built characters that were in the character builder, and so this application uh, supports importing from the D and D character builder. Okay. And so I basically went through and picked out some uh, ones that seemed interesting to me that were kind of a little different, but um, varied enough so that people could play the one that they want to use for this demo. Very cool. Um, for the sake of simplicity, I'll go with pizza, and because I like fighters as well. Great. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete these other ones, since they won't be used in this playtest. All right, great. So you are. Um, so if you go to the journal tab now, uh, you can see that there's a little description of the inn that you're staying with, staying in rather. Uh, it's called the Lonely Inn, um, and it's in. Uh, it's kind of badly named. It's in the heart of a big, uh, bustling trade city, mm -hmm. uh, and so you, a lone adventurer, are enjoying uh, perhaps a, a hearty meal and a pint of ale um, after a, a several days of journeying. And so I will uh, start up the the encounter, and we'll see how it goes. So one thing I'm doing right now, which I normally wouldn't tell you, uh, is I just made a private roll against your uh, passive perception. Mm -hmm. uh, and indeed, you notice nothing as, uh, as you're enjoying your meal until you hear uh, a scream above you. It sounds like a, a man uh, screaming uh, above. Uh, and in fact, uh, you look around, and from around the corners, you see um, several orcs uh, rounding the bend, uh, getting ready to charge. Okay. So uh, you'll see the orcs are here. And then uh, up, up here is where you heard the scream. This is the second level of the inn, but uh, you can't see where it came from just yet. So, uh, what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and roll initiative. So I'm going to add you to the initiative uh, tab. And so if you go to the initiative tab, mm -hmm. you can uh, roll your initiative from there. Just click the die icon. Okay. Oh, God, that's a very bad roll. Very me. Yes, not a great start <laughs> for brave Peter. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, add everyone who's going to be in the fight and roll their initiatives too. Bloody hell, I am absolutely rubbish. Yes, so you're <laughs> at the very back of the line. Uh, so the first to go is the creature shuffling upstairs, um, who uh, is a hobgoblin. And so uh, let's see how they do. All right, so as you see from the chat, uh, they uh, have just hit a peasant. You hear a scream upstairs and a thump uh, as, a, as someone falls out of their chair, uh, presumed, well, either dead or dying. It's hard to tell. And then uh, the door opens. 
and you hear uh, another scream from the peasants in a nearby room. So, uh, not the most cheerful start to the, uh, to the fight, but let's see how it goes. So, uh, the peasants are, you know, fairly unreliable, so I'm just going to make a quick saving throw. If they roll a 10 or higher, this group of peasants will help you out. So, they're feeling brave at the moment, but that could change any instant. So, uh, this peasant here bravely, uh, steps forward, uh, ready to fight the hobgoblin. But the hobgoblin uh, has threatening reach, so he doesn't want to just charge in. He's going to stay back. He's not an idiot, but he is, he is looking to help out. Uh, these other peasants aren't really sure what to do, so they um, start moving to the stairs uh, to, you know, to assess what's going on. The barkeep, uh, she steps up, and she sees these orcs coming in. So she moves up uh, here, and she goes ahead, and she readies in action. So I just marked her as readied, and she's going to attack uh, this orc here if he uh, breaks down the door where she is. The next group of peasants spring into action, and they're not as brave right now. So this one uh, runs off down the stairs. And uh, then she stops short as she sees uh, the orcs through the windows coming towards her. Uh, and she just, uh, you know, kind of stands there a little uh, worried. Uh, these two run towards you, and one of them screams out, like, Help us! For God's sake, help us! <laughs> But you are too slow. You're getting up from the chair, and, uh, you know, you have your weapon out. Uh, but the orcs first move in. So one quick thing I'll point out is you might notice there's a blue line for this orc. Yep. And that's just tracking its movement, which can be useful for telling if there's, like, an attack of opportunity mm -hmm. or a trap is triggered. So if you go over each square as you move, you can do that. Uh, a lot of times I'll just move them directly there uh, if I don't really feel like I need to track the movement. Gotcha. So those two just uh, come up to the door and burst it open. This one, though, is close enough that he uh, comes to the door and opens it. And, of course, our uh, brave barkeep uh, takes a swing at him with her club. And indeed, uh, she smashes her club down upon his head. You'll see that there's like kind of a little automation there where I can compare her attack to the defense and it'll d tell me whether she hits or not. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, cracks his head open and he falls to the ground being uh, but a poor minion himself. Uh, this orc spends his entire turn running up and uh, smashes the door open, uh, looking um, violently in your direction. And now, finally, it is your turn to act. Well, so if you let me know what you want to do, I can uh, just tell you kind of the basic stuff that you should keep in mind. Um, one thing to keep in mind is you can look at the powers subtab to see the powers that you have available to use. Where is that top? Okay, so if you uh, if you if you look on the right hand side at the PC tab, uh, you'll see like your PC description, and then if you go, you'll see there are a bunch of sub tabs: details, status, powers, skills, and other. Oh, okay. So you could go to powers there, and then you'll see that you have a number of powers, and you can click the arrow to um, on the left of each power. Uh, to show, like, uh, get its description, and then you'll see there are some roles that I can go over uh, soon. Just tell me which one you want to use, and I'll walk you through kind of the basic attack and damage automation we have. Well, the vicious offensive sounds pretty good, so let's go for a vicious offensive against this orc here. Great. Orc number three. So, first of all, you can just drag yourself next to orc number three. Uh, and if you might want to uh, reactivate the cursor mode if you're not in it right now, just so you can pick up your guy. Yep. Great. Okay, so you stride confidently forward. Uh, now uh, go ahead and in the vicious, vicious offensive uh, description, you'll see there's a purple die. You can click that, and you'll see a little window pop up right above your chat telling you to select a target. So then just select the orc, and then in the little dialogue above the orc's head, uh, click to roll, and we'll see if you hit. Ooh. Excellent. So you score a solid hit with your, uh, let me just look up what weapon you're using right now. With your greatsword. Uh, and you cleave into his chest. Uh, and you can go ahead and roll damage. Uh, so next, just select that red die. And because you hit, he'll automatically be selected for damage. And then you can go ahead and roll it. 
Okay, so that would be eight. Not bad. Excellent. And uh, you slice uh, right through his chest, um, and he falls to the ground, coughing up blood. Uh, as he is just a hit point minion, any any damage would have killed him, but um, I thought it would be fun for you to roll the damage anyway. Uh, there will be uh, tougher guys upstairs, so keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're off to a pre pretty good start. You've killed one orc, mm -hmm. the barkeep has killed an orc, and you've only, uh, you've only got one injured peasant so far, so things are going pretty well. Let's hope they stay that way. All right, the hobgoblin uh, springs into action, and uh, he's just annoyed to see this peasant here, and he jabs at him with his long spear and hits, and another peasant uh, sadly falls to the ground, uh, crying out in pain. The peasants go. Let's see how they're feeling. All right, they're, they're still feeling pretty brave. So these two peasants here uh, move up and charge these orcs. Okay. One of them is armed with a beer mug, the other one is armed with a broken uh, table leg he somehow acquired. Uh, and so one other thing I'll note is that um, you can put in a modifier when you're doing that uh, attack. So I selected the orc to attack. I'm just putting a little plus one modifier for charging. Uh, and he hits, so that's great. Another orc, uh, is he uh, you know, uh, hits him in the knee and the orc falls to the ground. Uh, and then he uh, delivers a death blow on the back of the head. The other peasant attacks and uh, sadly misses. Oh, dear. All right, so the barkeep, actually, I should have moved over here because she had a readied action. So it's really these peasants' turn. Let's see how they do. Uh, and they're still not feeling great. So uh, they run over here uh, by the bar and pick up, uh, you know, um, one picks up a, a, a bottle of whiskey and the other a bottle of wine, and they're trying to drink away their fear. Meanwhile, the barkeep uh, moves up and uh, charges forward at this orc. And uh, sadly, she also misses. All right, the orcs go. There's only one orc left. Uh, he takes a des desperate attack mm -hmm. with his club at one of the peasants and uh, hits and uh, knocks him to the ground. All right, it is your turn again. Um, hmm. Well, I reckon these th two are actually getting along very well with this orc. And I don't think he's going to last much longer, so I think I might as well go upstairs and get rid of that hideous hobgoblin. That sounds good. So I think your move is five. So basically you can move uh, ten squares uh, and start going up those stairs. And probably he'll uh, he'll meet you. It doesn't look like there's anyone else upstairs to challenge him. Seven. Am I okay there? How how does one check when when I've gone too far? Uh, so that would just this is um, a lot of these. Uh, what we have is basically just a tool to facilitate playing D and D. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, you just want to count, and make sure that it okay. feels good to you. So. And if you wanted, you could do the movement tracking so that I could kind of see your path of movement and make sure it looks good. Oh, okay. But um, I think you're probably set. Okay. That's a one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've probably too far. So there would be my double move. Great. Okay. So now the hobgoblin goes and uh, he starts marching down the stairs. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Four. Uh, so he spends, uh, well, actually, he charges down the stairs uh, and does get to attack you. Who's that? So. He attacks with his long spear, uh, but, you know, you uh, block the uh, attack um, and uh, step aside, and his attack goes wide. Uh, so it's the peasant's turn. Um, this one, let's see. Ooh, uh, he's not feeling so great, so he steps back, uh, and he figures the barkeep will take care of him. Uh, the other peasants are also not feeling great. Uh, this one runs over here just to be safe, and these two cower. 
Um, the barkeep uh, steps forward, though. She uh, does not know fear. You know, this is her establishment mm. that she's defending. So she brings her club up and takes down this orc, hopefully. But alas, he's too wily for her. Will the, uh, will the barkeep survive the orc's attack? Let's find out. Ooh, not good for the barkeep. He deals her a nasty blow um, across the face, and she falls to the ground. Uh, you're not sure if she's dead, but she's definitely uh, wounded. Uh, your turn. Um, right, I think it's time to get mean. Let's take a look at me powers. Oh, and I'll just point out that um, you do have an action point that you can use. So you oh. can get an extra action with that, and you can see that under the status tab where you can track that in your searches. Um, and, of course, you might consider using um, an encounter power that would do more damage yes. or a daily power. Yeah, often I'm going to use the goading maneuver and charge against the hobgoblin. Sounds great. And... The fella. Let's attack him. Oh, bugger. Okay, I've missed. Uh, okay, but uh, you do have heroic effort. Uh, so first of all, you, you want to mark goading maneuver as used. Um, and let's see, you rolled an 11 versus a his AC. So you do have an ability that would give you a plus four to hit, but I'll just tell you that's, that's not going to be enough to, uh, to overcome his AC, so you probably want to save it. Okay. Uh, would you like to use action point now, or do you want to wait? Um, mm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to be brave on this one and wait a little bit. Excellent. I think you can probably afford to do that. You're at full hit points. So let's see how uh, things go with the Hobgoblin. Enraged, he attacks with his long spear, hoping for better results mm. this time. And indeed, he gets them. And so he does eight points of damage. And so you'll notice that it was uh, automatically deducted from your hit points. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, so he's feeling pretty satisfied because he figures if he does that, you know, like two or three more times, you're probably going to be dead. So good for him. All right, let's see if this peasant, yes, this peasant's finally uh, willing to brave this orc again. Uh, and so he comes up and takes a swing. Excellent. And uh, he smashes it across the back. Uh, sending it uh, wheeling to the ground and uh, lets out a quick cheer. The orc cries out, No, you have defeated me! Uh, so that was just a cheesy way to demonstrate uh, the voice fonts that you can access if you go under voice, voice fonts. Oh, so Still an orc, I'll take that off. That's for the uh, if you go under... Yes, it's pretty fun. Um, you know, it definitely has a novelty to it. Uh, I don't know how much I could stand someone doing it all game. But uh, there's, there's about, like, ten uh, voice fonts you can choose to, and they can make you sound like a woman or a man or like an orc or a paladin or an elf, that kind of thing. That's terrific. So feel free to play around with those if you want. Uh, so now the peasants go. Uh, and... These poor peasants, they just, you know, they just don't feel up to fighting at the moment. Uh, and the orc, of course, is, all the orcs have been defeated, so it is your turn. So it's you against the hobgoblin, um, and I wish you luck. Well, since the golden maneuver is gone, and he's the last one to go, let's go for my daily. And let's use my master edge against Great, him. good luck. Um. Ooh. Excellent. You uh you slip past his defenses and uh strike him. You can go ahead and roll damage. damage. Come on, you evil animal. Oh that was pathetic. And uh the worst possible damage, <laughs> but you know, uh, he is caught a little off guard by it. Uh, he thought, you know, like none of these people are posing any challenge to him. He thought, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just put the master's edge condition on him. 
So I just put a little marker there uh, that he is the master's edge mm -hmm. uh, condition. And so uh, if he does move or anything, just point that out to me and um, you can make an attack. Um, I believe if he moves uh, to a square adjacent to one of your allies. Okay. Um, so not sure if he'll be doing that, but if he does, uh, you'll definitely have that advantage. And you still don't want to use your action point, right? Um, well, yeah, why not? Since he's already been hurt, he doesn't know where he's standing at the moment, and he's probably cowling a little bit. Let's go for the action point and, and give him a heroic effort and kick him. Excellent. The old one-two punch. So go ahead and choose the attack that you'd like to use. Right, let's use five. Well, they both do similar damage. Yeah, it looks like they both do similar damage. Reaping Strike will do damage even if you miss, so that yeah. is something to consider. Let's go for Reaping Strike. Not bad. Um, Excellent. So you can go ahead and roll damage, and let's hope you roll a little uh, higher damage this time. Ooh, that's better. That's better. Uh, great. So he's uh, pushed back uh, a bit. Uh, you'll notice uh, he's still not bloodied, um, but uh, you think that you are, uh, you are uh, making progress. Also, uh, because you attacked him, uh, I, f I forgot to include this in the past, but fighters do mark people who they attack. Um, so uh, you, you do mark him which means uh, you'll see a little flag icon on him to designate that. And if he ever gets bloodied, you'll see a little blood drop. Awesome. All right, and that was your attack, so it is his turn now. And he responds with another vicious jab with his long spear. Yes. And uh, a miss, which is good news for you and probably pretty bad news for him. Let's hope so. Let's see if the peasants are going to come uh, help you out now. Not this one. Ah, but these ones are willing to step up to the plate. Uh, so basically, these two move up here. This one just feels it's a little too uh, too crowded, and she stays back, uh, ready to step in if one of her colleagues dies. Uh, and so these, of course, they're afraid of his uh, reach, so they're going to wait till next round to move in. And it is your turn again. Well, since the reaping strike has served me well, let's try again. Excellent. And, oh, miss, okay. Unfortunately, you missed, but uh, Reaping Strike does do damage on a miss. So you can click that uh, red damage die for the miss, damage miss, and then you can, uh, you'll can you have to target him because uh, you did miss him, so it doesn't automatically assume that you're doing damage against him. Ooh. And did, that did push him to bloodied, so he's, uh, he's below half hit points now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, which does not make him happy, but I guess uh, I guess you're pretty happy it about it. Makes me happy, definitely. Uh, he lets out a roar and attacks again uh, and misses, so no luck for him. This peasant still cowardly. These peasants uh, don't feel up to attacking this round, but they don't run away. They remember that they came here for a reason, so perhaps next round they'll help you out. And it's your turn again. Right, let's do another reaping strike. Oh my goodness, I am absolutely terrible. Well, you get to do another 5 damage. Ooh, 5. So you are chipping away at him. <laughs> um, one thing I will notice is uh, I believe you did use your action point. So if you go to status, you probably just want to uh, toggle that action point thing down to zero. So that's just a minor thing for keeping track of things that you've used. Okay, so... Uh, we go back to him, and now it's just kind of a desperate war of attrition yeah. who will uh, take the other one down first. <laughs> but I think the odds are in your favor. Uh, plus, the dice are definitely, definitely are. Or your ability to do damage uh, even when you miss. Uh, all right, and let's see if these peasants are going to help you. Great. So this peasant steps up doing a shift, uh, so avoiding his, um, his attack, and she aggressively lunges with her club. But you're not really supposed to lunge with a club. You're supposed to swing it, so not in her favor. And it's uh, your turn again. Well, let's hope my turn is... Oh, yes. Excellent. So it looks like you scored a critical hit. You rolled a natural 20. So what you can do is when you um, 
click on him for damage, you can uh, go ahead and click on his figure and select max damage. And then you can go ahead and roll it as normal. Booyah! Excellent. A solid blow that brings him almost to his knees. He responds with another desperate strike. He doesn't see any avenue of escape, so it's really his only option. Oops. Uh, and he scores a solid hit. Uh, and in fact, uh, brings you almost to your knees as well. So things are getting pretty close now. This peasant's already invested. She doesn't even need to make a morale check. Will she be able to slay the hobgoblin? Well, let's see. And indeed, uh, she sweeps uh, uh, and strikes his rib cage hard, shattering several ribs, and he falls to the ground in a bloody mess. Uh, and she looks at you uh, with like awe and respect, and um, uh, nods to you. And the other peasants uh, all around are actually a lot more impressed, uh, and they just start cheering wildly. Um, and um, after tending to the barkeeper, uh, they, uh, they offer to buy your drinks for the rest of your stay uh, in this lovely inn. Uh, so that concludes our uh, sample combat. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll just go over some of the other features, if that sounds good. Yeah, sounds excellent. Great. So uh, one of the things that you didn't really uh, do this combat, because uh, you were doing pretty uh, well in terms of hit points till the end, was healing. Uh, so what you could have done, if you had wanted, uh, is you could have, you know, spend a second wind, or if you'd had a cleric, they could have healed you. Mm -hmm. So if you look at your hit points on the top left, there's a little plus sign. And if you click that, you'll see an adjust hit points window. So beyond just adjusting your hit points, you could click the use surges button, right. and then specify, like, a number of surges to use, and then click to, to use them. So And then it'll automatically deduct those surges. So that's kind of nice. Very nice. Um, and on that same window, the same adjust hit points window, you can, uh, instead of just adding to your hit points, you can add to your temporary hit points. And so those will be tracked uh, separately. So I'll go ahead and add some temporary hit points to you now. And you'll see that they're tracked separately, and you'll lose them first. And they over, it's, you, you always have the, the highest temporary hit points, so it overrides a smaller number, that kind of thing. So uh, those are kind of the things you can do with healing. Uh, another thing you might do at the end of a combat is you might take a rest. Mm -hmm. So if you click that little triangle next to the um, plus sign on your nameplate in the kind of top left where your character is, you'll see that there, that'll bring up um, a drop down where you can select take a rest. And you can just use that to quickly reset things. So you might be like, oh, I'm taking a short rest. So you might be like, okay, refresh all my encounter powers uh, and that sort of thing and remove all my conditions. Uh, so you can use that to simulate uh, different rests without having to manually go through your character and change everything. Nice. Um, yep, I already went over AOE and line of sight, so that's good. Uh, so those are uh, one thing you might have noticed is at the beginning of the combat, I uh, revealed some monsters so you can hide uh, monsters. Mm -hmm. And you can also make um, players invisible, uh, but since players can basically know where each other is, it just puts a little uh, icon on it to kind of show that they're invisible to other people. Okay. Uh, so those are kind of the main combat stuff. The journal, if you look at the journal, you can see that you can uh, make new entries, obviously, and uh, track different notes and that sort of thing. You can also mark journal entries as public or private if you don't want other people to see them. Uh, importing PCs, so uh, with this demo you just selected from pre-selected PCs, but like I said, I imported them from the DDI character builder, so they'd all then, uh, I can bring in the ones I made or sample ones that they have available, that kind of thing. And I can do the same thing with monsters, which is really nice because it saves a ton of time because I have access to all the monsters in the monster compendium. So that's really handy. I can, you know, go through and search all the different types of monsters and pick out the ones that I like, and they'll have all their stats already available. So as soon as the monster uh, compendium is updated, that basically the, the virtual table is also updated because you can just access that database and the whole thing is there. 
Exactly. So yeah, as they update it, we're making minor updates on our end to keep up with them. Mm -hmm. So usually within a week of an update that they do, uh, we'll have uh, synced up with them, and they do updates pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. So um, so within a short period of time, you'll be synced up with all the latest material. That's very cool. uh, and so then, yep, it's pretty fun. Uh, and then the uh, and of course you can also uh, import monsters that you built, so you can make custom monsters using their monster builder and import them, which can be fun. Uh, so the other thing that there is is there's uh, map building tools. So I made this with um, basically D and D dungeon tiles, right. uh, which are very similar to the ones that are available in stores. Mm -hmm. And so right now we offer uh, three basic types. We've kind of got the city ones that I made with this this map out of. Then we've got the dungeon ones that I'm putting down now, and then we've got uh, wilderness uh, tiles, you know, for outdoor terrain and that kind of thing. Uh, so they can, I, think, I find them very handy for building a map uh, modularly and very quickly, and they give you a pretty good uh, number of tools to work with to make fun, customized maps. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing you can do, of course, is you can make kind of simple things or adjustments using the, um, the paint tool. Uh, you know, make basic shapes and that kind of thing to, to build encounters. So those are kind of the, the basic map building things. Uh, and then the one other thing you can do is you can put like a basic background. So I could make, you know, grass or, um, or a dirt background, that kind of thing. Uh, so those are, that's uh, basic map building. Sounds, I already kind of talked about the voice fonts. Mm -hmm. There's also a few basic uh, sound effects in the tools, like about a dozen that you can use for like an arrow hit. Um, or a dagger clang, that kind of thing, uh -huh. uh, if you want to use those. And then uh, the final thing is that we do have a cloud repository where you can store uh, maps, adventures, and PCs that you create and edit. And so then if I go into another campaign that I have, I can import those all into that campaign. So I have a nice um, you know, selection of maps and adventures that I can pull up on the fly in a campaign as needed, which is definitely handy. So those are kind of the main uh, the main features of the tool. Uh, so just let me know if you have any other questions. Uh, yes, a couple. If uh, I'm presuming the answer is yes, but I will ask just in case. If I have a character in a campaign that I'm running, and I want as an NPC, and I wanted to bring that character as, uh, as a character in another campaign, would that be possible? So this is you have. Um, like an NPC that you're running and you want to bring them over to another campaign? Like uh, a monster or something that you created? No, to play as a character. As in, for example, the Hobgoblin that I just defeated. Say that you come into my campaign uh, with me as the, as the DM. If you wanted to play that Hobgoblin as a character, would you be able to do it? So uh, for the Hobgoblin, we, we kind of treat uh, PC stats and monster stats differently. Okay. So I couldn't... I couldn't bring in the Hobgoblin, mm -hmm. but I could, if I had created him like using more standard PC rules and this kind of more standard PC sheet, because mm -hmm. uh, you know in in fourth edition, which is uh, what a lot of this is based on, though a lot of it is obviously kind of edition neutral, mm -hmm. um, the stats are pretty different. But if I had made him as a PC, and so you'd kind of see him in the PC list, but maybe I make this cool special NPC, then I could do it. Or say if you had a PC that you wanted to use in multiple campaigns you could definitely port it over. So if you, for example, liked Peter, you could send, uh, if you were a DDI subscriber during the beta, uh, free users currently don't have access to the cloud repository or the monster character builder importing. Mm -hmm. But if you were a DDI subscriber during the beta, you could be like, oh, I really like Peter. I'll uh, put them in the repository and bring them into a, uh, another campaign that someone else is DMing. Gotcha. Um, also, what is the... Um, availability of the tool offline? I mean, if I wanted to create a map, would I need to be online or is that something that I can do, uh, I don't know, on my laptop on the way to work? So the tool is, it's an online application, so you do need to be online to use it because okay. it um, uses uh, Java, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, it obviously has advantages, which is uh, anyone, uh, well, anyone who's on a PC or a Linux or a Mac can uh, get into it without really having to do a big download or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But of course, the disadvantage is that if you're offline, uh, 
uh, you can't access the, the tool to, to do stuff. Okay, no, that's fair enough. And also, if I wanted to import my own tiles, is that, is that uh, something that will be available? Uh, so that's currently uh, not something that uh, that we have support for. Okay. Um, there'll definitely be uh, more tiles available in the future, though. Okay. So um, uh, we're definitely planning to expand the selection of tiles. Cool. Well, that sounds that sounds good. I mean, the, the tiles that you showed me are really really nice. Um, and I also can imagine the other thing that I was going to ask: if I wanted to add any more icons on the fly, uh, say, for example, that there is an icon for the, the, the uh, chairs and the tables are crushed. That means the terrain will become difficult, but there is not a solid object in there. Uh, is that something that can be changed automatically? Uh, is it something that you can just do on the fly, or do you need to uh, e enter some sort of um, edit mode of the map to change whatever it is, and then come back to the adventure? Uh, so the map is uh, very dynamic. Like, I'm currently in the edit mode. So, mm -hmm. for example, I could, like, throw down this piece of terrain, gotcha. or maybe I'd, you know, put down, um, uh, you know, a brown square to show, like, oh, this chair has been totally destroyed, that kind of thing. Uh, so definitely everything's very dynamic, and you can do everything during play. Brilliant. I like that a lot. No, it's absolutely excellent. I'm, I'm really, I really like your your tool. I, I think that could work uh, very well. I was, I was listening today to a podcast um, where people were complaining about the difficulties of playing over Skype, and I'm, I'm quite taken by how uh, this, the, the virtual table that, that you just showed me, pretty much gets over any of the issues that the guys in the podcast were were, were complaining, you know, in, in the sense of you, you don't really necessarily know exactly where you are, um, setting up all the maps and the cameras and the raw dice, it can be a bit tricky and sometimes can be a little bit dodgy, but this pretty much gets it all sorted on the way that you can track uh, what's going on, you know, the, the initiative tracker, all the tools that you have used, your dailies, your encounter powers already used. Um, that can be very, very useful. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so thanks a lot. Um, I think uh, the one of the big things that we tried to design when making this tool was to make it like uh, accessible and easy to use and something you can jump into and it'll give you basically all the tools that you need to play D&D. &D. So it has the voice, it has the map, it has the different condition tracking and all that. So uh, I definitely think it's uh, a fun, intuitive uh, tool that gives you what you need to play D&D &D and other role-playing games. So. Uh, we're pretty happy with it, and we're uh, excited about you know just continuing to expand the features um, and continuing to work on it. Excellent. Is there a, a date of for, for release already set, or is it still in, in development? So it's uh, still in beta. We haven't announced uh, a date of release yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we are definitely uh, pretty happy uh, with where the tool is right now, um, but yeah, we just haven't. Uh, come out with an official announcement on yet on that enough. yet that's fair enough no that's that's really cool i mean i think this is definitely going to make subscribing to the di a lot more attractive than than it has been so far so yeah this is i'm i'm really taken i really like this yeah and i definitely think um subscribing to d and DDI is great because you get access to the character builder and the mm. monster builders. So you get all those useful stats. So yeah, we're pretty uh, we're pretty happy with that, and I definitely like uh, I, I use it a lot, and I enjoy uh, running adventures and encounters on it. So it's pretty fun. Yeah, no, I'm pretty excellent. Well, well, I I very much look forward to the to, to doing a, a longer interview with you guys, so, so I can ask a lot more questions about. Uh, the, the ins and outs of doing a, a virtual table like this and what the future may, may hold for you people. Excellent, great. Yeah, so I'll definitely follow up with you on uh, email to set that up, and um, I'm glad you enjoyed it, and uh, I hope you have a good night. And you too, sir. Thank you very, very much for your time. It's been really good fun. 
Awesome. That's great. Farewell. Take care.